we're back for the second half of episode two of OpenMRS University. Um, just our typical pause to make things hopefully easier to view if you're on a slow internet connection. Um, all right, so we have checked out the OpenMRS source code for version 1.8.0, and we've created, using the Maven archetype, a skeleton of a project that we're now going to start to fill out with a little bit of actual functionality. We're not going to do too much because this is just a quick screencast. So we want to basically be able to show all of the names for a concept. So um, I'm going to go into the web layer of this module here. And um, the archetype actually creates for us a, a skeleton of a controller, um, which is good. So I'm going to open this up. Um, I'm actually going to delete uh, almost all of the text here. Um, but uh, just, you know, it, this actually gives you something to start from if you're just getting familiar with Spring MVC. So I'm going to, whoops, click the wrong button there, bring that back. All right, I'm going to maximize this so you can see a little bit better. Um, I'm going to start off with, um, I'm going to start off here with basically an empty class and you're, get rid of the import. So what I've got here is a class with the at controller annotation, which in annotation driven Spring MVC means that basically uh, Spring is going to instantiate a bean for this class, um, meaning that Spring will know what it, where this, well, Spring will manage a bean of this class. Uh, don't need to go into too much detail about that. So um, the first thing I'm going to want here is I'm going to want a method uh, public void show form um, and this method is you know this is going this is the method that will get called when the user visits this page for the first time and in order to uh, actually connect this to a URL you could say I'm going to put in a request mapping um, annotation and uh, off the top of my head, I forget exactly what this is supposed to look like. Um, I believe I need to say module and then the ID of my module. So that was concept name. And uh, let's say, and this is going to be view concept names is going to be the name of the page. Actually, I mean, I kept pretty much a lot of flexibility over this, over exactly what URL I map here, but uh, by convention, I want, you know, all modules should uh, only map URLs underneath slash module slash their module ID. All right, so basically at this point, um, any get or post to this URL is going to invoke this method here. So let's actually switch that around. Um, it doesn't really matter for the example here. Um, but I'm going to say method equals request method dot post or dot get rather. So now only get requests to this URL will invoke will uh, invoke this method. Um, the idea is that in a future version of this module, we might want to actually allow editing the names or something, and so we you know we don't want. Well, anyway, and that would happen through a post to back to the same URL, presumably. All right, so uh, the next thing we need to do is actually, you know, when someone visits this URL, you need to actually get a, um, well, we need, we need something in the model of, of the page so that we can actually, dis you know, basically the concept in this case that they're trying to view the names of so that we can display those names. I could put uh, the logic to fetch the concept within this method here. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, uh, up here, have a method get, um, re well, say get concept. Uh, I'm going to have a method here which, um, and I'm going to hit Control shift o to set up the import for concept. Um, I'm going to have a method here and I'm going to annotate it with model attribute. 
um, which is a spring MVC annotation that does two things, but one of the things it does is every time any of the requests in this controller class are called, before that, the, the model, the M, the M in MVC, is going to be populated by all model attribute annotated methods. Um, and let's say here, the um, I believe that this ought to just magically work. I can say at request param, um, and I'm going to say required equals false because presumably, you know, the first time you visit this page, you might not have actually chosen a concept yet. Um, and I'm going to say value equals uh, concept ID. And I want Spring and OpenMRS to automatically convert that sort of concept ID parameter passed in to a, con to, uh, co to a concept. Um, all right, so why is Spring unhappy about this? Uh, right, I haven't put a return in this method yet, so um, all I'm going to do here is return concept, which might be null or if the user has actually specified a concept ID, should be an actual concept value. So I'll hit save here. All right, and I'm going to unminimize this. Uh, so the next thing I need to do here is write the JSP page that corresponds to this, uh, well, corresponds to this page. So I'm going to go into source main web app and, um, well, right next to where this uh, helper JSP page is, I'm going to, actually, I'm just going to rename this one, um, and I want to rename it. Um, so, since I've actually written this request mapping, this request, uh, the method that handled, handles the request is mapped to this URL and it returns nothing, it returns void. That means by convention, Spring MVC is going to look for this uh, view concept names. Uh, for the view with the same name, view concept names. So I will view concept names is the um, is what I will rename this JSP page to, and I will open this up and maximize this so you can get a little bit better view. So you know we'll stick with the existing includes and header and footer, um, but I'm going to here and. You know, this will be ugly and bad style, and I'm not going to bother to international or to localize this yet. I'm not going to make it look pretty either. But at this point, in our model, we have a concept, so we would like to display its names. So let's just say uh, you know, table um, nothing pretty. Um, Let's say we want to show the concept ID. Um, we're going to want to do, I'm just going to copy this, paste it, the UUID, um, and then the names. Oops, um, so, you know, the concept ID, as I said, we have a model object called con something in our model called concept, so I can just say concept dot concept ID. Um, the UID will be concept dot UUID. Um, if either of these things were values entered by the user, I would want to escape either, uh, in this case, I would want to escape XML just to prevent any. Uh, script injection attacks. Um, neither of these are user entered, so I'm not going to do that here. So, um, all right, so now I want to display the names and might as well do this in a table as well. Let's say border equals one. Um, and in this table, we'll actually have a header, I guess. Um, I could put this in a T head, but overkill for this quick example. Um, you know, for each of these names, we're going to want to display, say, the locale, um, the, you know, whether or not it is preferred, the type of the name, the actual name, 
and any tags that are on that name. So um, actually, you know, looking at this, in reality, this module should really sort these things, presumably by locale first, and then the preferred in that locale to the top. Um, so if I wanted to do that, I could change the way I set up the, um, the model object, but I'm not going to do that for now, um, since that's not really what I'm trying to show today. So um, in this case, I'm just going to say C for each var equals, say, CN items equals and so, um, you know, I know there must be a property on concept that is, you know, that gives me the names of the concept. Now, I actually know that it's, you know, I can just say concept.names, but um, let's say that we're new to OpenMRS. Um, I will uh, open up here concept. Um, you know, the org.openmrs.concept class, and um, I'm going to look over here in the Eclipse uh, outline view and see what are the getters on this, on this domain object. Um, and I see, you know, there's a bunch of them for a number of things, but specifically in this case, I've got a getNames method, which returns um, all of the, well, it returns all of the not non-voided names. Actually, I'm surprised that that is not uh, documented here in the Java doc that this is... Well, anyway, but uh, I know that this getNames method is going to return all of the non-deleted names. You know, there are some other methods that return, you know, a collection of concept names. You know, I could search, you know, um, there's quite a few to get different kinds of names. You can get names for locale, get synonyms only, um, in this case, though, what I really want is all the names, so get names. All right, I'm going to switch back to my JSP page. So what I want is concept.names. That's what I want to iterate over. Um, and you know, for each name, there's a row. And it looks like I have, well, uh, well, OK, so I've got um, five rows here. So the locale is going to be con or cn dot locale. Whether or not it is preferred is cn dot uh, locale preferred. Um, the type is cn dot concept name type. And so if I wanted to check and actually verify whether I'm doing this right, I can look back at the concept class here and go up to the top. Um, looking around here, or actually, sorry, I'm going to now, within names, I'm going to hit F3 on concept name here because what I really want to see is what are the properties on the concept name class. Um, so each concept name has a concept name type property, um, which is, well, uh, of a, you know, I, I can show you what those are. Those are um, just looking at the javadoc, fully specified short index term or null to indicate this just random synonym. So um, c dot, cn dot concept name type is what I want to show there. So next is the name. And so this, in fact, is um, user entered. So I want to escape this to avoid letting the user inject any uh, any um, JavaScript in here. So rather than just directly printing this to the page, I think I can do C out. Um, no, I was hoping that the C out tag would autocomplete here. Um, so to remind myself how to exactly escape XML, I'm going to open up crt.tld. The uh, shortcut there was con command shift R or control shift R. Um, and here, I'm just going to look up, you know, the outline is not so helpful, so I'm going to search for out, um, and there's an escape XML property, which in this case I want to set to true, so, all right, so C out, escape XML equals true, value, ah, value equals, and then here I can say cn dot 
name. Uh, so, all right, so I'm printing out the name, but I'm escaping any XML in it. And finally, we've got the tags. Um, and looking back at the concept name class, each concept name can have a collection of tags. Those tags, hitting F3 here, are, um, I mean, they're objects, but the thing I'm going to want to print out for them is tag. However, that is also user-entered, so I'm going to want to escape that. So switching back here, let's just, uh, for the moment, I'm not going to print these in any pretty way. I will, um, well, I'll just print them all out. So C for each var equals T for tag, um, items equals cn.tags, and I'm just going to say t.tag, but I need to escape it, so c out escape xml equals true, value equals that. Uh, all right, so, um, and, you know, I suppose what I should really do is to you know, put some commas between these things, but I don't want a comma after the last one, so var status equals status. Um, see if test equals uh, status dot last, or rather not status dot last. I'll put a comma and all right can save this. Um, not clear on why uh, Eclipse is finding a problem with this. Probably if you're using another editor, you wouldn't have a problem with it. So anyway, I've now got a page here where I would be displaying a concept. Um, well, yeah, displaying the names of a concept. Um, there's one thing I've actually n neglected to do here, which is that if I were to view this page and um, for the first time, there the user has not actually chosen a concept. So I'm not going to see anything. So what I actually need to do before this table, so I'm going to move this down, put a horizontal rule, very uh, mid-1990s, I know. So um, before that, I'm going to say choose a concept, and I'm going to say here openMRS underscore tag colon concept field um, form field name equals concept ID. So this will import, hit save, um, so this is going to import the uh, well, sorry, it's going to use the standard OpenMRS concept selector, and it's going to fill that out as a for, as the form field concept ID. Just looking back at the controller here, um, yes, that was in fact the name, uh, the field name that I want to use, the form field name I want to use. Going back to the JSP, I actually need to put this in a form. Form method equals get, and I'm going to, you know, it'll just submit back to the exact page I'm on right now. Um, input type equals submit, value equals uh, view. All right, so now we've got what ought to be a fully functional page. Um, we have a form backing object method which fetches this concept, and we've got a way to select it, and once it's selected, we can display it. So clicking here, double clicking here to minimize. Um, the next thing we need to do is just uh, actually link to this page from, uh, from the link that we'd already told our module we wanted on the administrative page. So let's go back to the controller here and just get this URL. Um, I'm going to copy it because I'm pretty sure I'm going to need this in another file. All right. so. Looking back over at uh, at the other project, the API level project of our module, um, in here in the source main Java folder, in the extension folder, is this admin list extension. You might be wondering why this. You might be thinking this has something to do with the web layer. Really, why is it in the API? 
project of the module? It's a good question. Um, basically, uh, well, what basically when the module itself is started, in the presence or absence of uh, any web interface for OpenMRS, um, you do need to be able to connect all the extension points. So this is declared here. Um, this may change with OpenMRS 2.0. You might not need. You might be able to actually move these to the web layer of a module, but in 1.x, uh, it lives in the API layer. So I'm going to open this up, and um, in here we've got. Uh, it's actually giving us two things, a list here, a list of links, and for style I want this to be a linked hash map, not a hash map, so that the order is preserved. Um, and I really ought to have spaces here, so concept name management. Um, in here I need to put the URL uh, that we're mapping to, hopefully, so this dot form. Um, Hopefully this is right, and so I can save this. So the next step I need to do here is to build, actually compile this module. So now I'm going to uh, right click here on um, this concept name project, the top level one. I'm going to say run as maven package. So that ought to... Um, run, it ought to, well, call package on both of the sub-projects. Um, and, you know, it's gone through and successfully built these. Um, there are not any unit tests in this case, um, partly because I'm saving time, partly because there's hardly anything worth testing at this point. But so if I look here in uh, the target folder and refresh this, I guess I don't need to refresh it, um, it has built a jar file containing the API for this module, which in this case is n nothing really to speak of. Um, but, you know, in a more complicated module, other modules that include it might include its jar file. So, um, in this target folder in the OMOD subproject, I can refresh this, we'll see that it's actually created the OMOD file, which is the OpenMRS module that I can deploy to an OpenMRS installation. So, um, I'm now going to pause this uh, screencast while I uh, find where I've got my OpenMRS standalone installation to load up. So um, I, well, it's been only a second for you, but it took a couple minutes for me to find uh, where I had OpenMRS standalone um, installed and you know start it running. I will now log in here, and I will go to Administration, Manage Modules, and see I've got a lot running right now, but I'm going to add this new module of mine. Um, let's see, so this is uh, my Documents, Workspace, Concepts Name, OMOD, Target, and then it's this OMOD file. So I will upload that. And let's see whether I got this all right on the first time. Well, OK, it loaded correctly. That's a start. And we see here concept name management module version 1.0 snapshot. I'm the author. There's the description I put in. Um, OK, so now let's go to administration and look down here. And we do see, in fact, an advanced concept name management um, link. So that's good. I click on it. Hey, all right, this is pretty good. Um, we could easily have failed by now. So um, we need to choose a concept. So hopefully I can just start typing something like wait. Indeed, so let's pick weight in kilograms and click view. And okay, so this is concept 5089. It's got some uh, UID, which doesn't mean much, and it's got two names in the English locale. Neither of them is preferred, um, is marked as locale preferred. One of them is fully specified weight in kilograms, another is WT. Um, so far, so good. I can look up another concept, uh, malaria. 
clinical malaria. Okay, so this one has at least two names for sure. Um, actually, it's got five. Um, none of them marked as preferred. One of them is fully is fully specified, and indeed every concept uh, is supposed to have one fully specified name um, in every locale. And so that one is malaria in this case. There are synonyms clinical, clinical malaria, and presumed, and fun time. Uh, I've got to say I'm a little bit curious what demo database I'm running off of right now, but anyway, this is actually the whole purpose of this module. So let's say, in fact, I open up uh, this malaria concept in the regular dictionary. Am I going to see all these names? I guess I am. So, you know, I can see them. Um, what I wouldn't have necessarily been able to know is which ones had tags, which ones were marked as preferred. Um, so, you know, you can imagine that the next step we would take with this module is to add a little widget here to allow the adding and removing of tags, which is something that you can't actually do in the regular UI. All right, so um, we have, so to summarize, we have uh, put together a module. It does something not completely useless, and we did it relatively quickly. And um, we used the Maven archetype built by Gutam, our Summer of Code student. So um, hopefully this is useful, and um, well, hopefully you will follow these steps and build some modules of your own. All right, um, catch you guys in a couple weeks with the next screencast.